What's up, baby girl? You ready to Hi. make another video with me today? <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's Nick back with Nikita's Tech Ops, here to make another video for you guys. I know a few of you were interested in a DJI Mavic Mini review. So today, we will be taking a look at what is effectively the coolest drone you can possibly buy without having to register it with the FAA. You guys ready to check it out? On top of this video today, I'm going to be showing off a few of the cool accessories that I have gotten for the drone since receiving it as a holiday gift from my beautiful fiance. So, a few things to cover here regarding the DJI Mavic Mini is the biggest and probably uh, most important feature of the drone is that it weighs only 249 grams with the battery uh, inserted into the drone. It actually weighs a little bit below that because they uh, intend it, or they presume that you might purchase the uh, propeller guard accessory that you can put on the drone. I do not have one to show you, but it basically looks like uh, like little guards that would go around the the arms and the propellers so that if while you or maybe someone who is not very well versed in flying a drone is maybe flying indoors or you know near some obstacles it keeps the propellers and and the drone itself from banging up against stuff so the drone itself incredibly lightweight um, everyone that I show this thing to um, in terms of family and friends cannot believe that DJI was <laughs> able to put so many features and just such an incredible um, overall package into something so, so tiny. Um, you guys will see just how impressive this thing is in probably a, f a few minutes here after I go over some other stuff regarding the drone, but I have some video footage that I took in Alabama while on holiday for New Year's um, on the beach where it's very windy. We're right up, uh, right up on the ocean and uh, you just won't believe how stable and steady and just beautiful um, a lot of the footage that I was able to take is. So uh, just to get into it here, one of the first cool things that I really, really recommend for the drone because it, it's important to keep your propellers protected. It's important to keep the drone as tightly packaged as you can while you're transporting it in a bag like this. So DJI partnered with a few different companies to help them produce accessories for the drone. So the first one here is a propeller guard, like I mentioned. It has just a little button that snaps it closed up against the drone. It has a little plastic cubby that the drone sits inside of and it protects the bottom propellers in their entirety. So as you can see, you can't even see the bottom propellers at all. And then it just has this high quality, um, I guess leather strap, I'm not really sure what material this is, it feels a lot like leather, um, that just goes over the top of the drone and then you tuck the two top propellers underneath this strap. So overall it's a very neat package, I think it looks really really good on the drone, it's like a really cool accessory, um, and it just helps you protect the entire drone, because the only thing you really get out of the box with the drone is this little plastic cover that goes over the lens. So it it gives you the peace of mind that not only the most important part of the drone is protected, which is the camera, you want the lens to be unscratched by, by all the elements that you're going to be around while filming with this drone. And this gives you the peace of mind that, you know, one of the arms won't come uh, apart from the drone while in your bag and you don't have to keep worrying about having to replace your propellers even though they're not expensive it, it's just something you have one less worry about by buying something that I think it was only 15 bucks and I got a discount during the holidays for it on Best Buy's website so 
Um, I, I think it's a really good way to just get some peace of mind in protecting your drone. Um, while on the topic of accessories, I'll just go ahead and move on to this bag. The, um, the bag caught my eye almost instantly. I saw it on Best Buy's website, and I was like, wow, this is really modern looking. It's really practical because it has a just a clear pocket that the drone fits inside of perfectly. And so if I grab the drone here, I'll actually show you guys. So all you have to do is slide the drone in here. You close this guy. And then you've got just a buckle that keeps that latched. And you can see your drone at all times. So it's one of those things that if you look at the bag, like maybe you forgot to put your drone inside the bag, the second you look at the bag and you're like, oh crap, my drone's not in there, you'll you'll know to instantly go grab your drone. Because you can sometimes be in a rush. You might be stopping somewhere to grab a quick video um, just because you saw something cool maybe on the side of the road on a road trip or something, and you know you don't want to leave your drone on the side of the road. So it's really good to have a bag where you can actually know that the most important piece of your <laughs> of your puzzle here is is actually with you. So I think it's a really practical little window to have to just see your drone at all times, make sure it's safe. I think that's a really good idea. Um, the bag also has this little side pocket here. I don't currently have anything in there, but I'm almost positive they intended this to be a carrying case for the batteries. And just judging by the size, you can fit probably like six of them in there realistically, but like three if you have the fly more combo, you can probably fit all three of your batteries in there for sure. So that's pretty cool. And then the final little pocket here. Find the zipper. So the final pocket has just some little sections inside as you'll see on the little pocket on the left I have the charging cable. On the pocket on the right I have my replacement propeller blades and then the little screwdriver that came with the drone to get the propellers off. So that's I I don't know, the, the bag didn't come with a guide, but I presume that's what they intended those two pockets to be for. And finally, I have the almighty DJI controller. And man, being honestly uh, a second in a lifetime uh, drone pilot, my, my brother owns the DJI Mavic Pro, so it it has a very similar controller it flies very similarly to this but i only flew my brother's drone for like maybe i don't know five minutes before ever flying this thing and i have to say i i commend dji heavily this has to be probably one of the best handling flying drones i have ever laid eyes on and the only other experience with drones besides the two dji drones that i've ever flown was just really cheap drones that either friends or family would gift me for like birthday or holidays um back in the uh, you know primal times of drones where you could pay 20 30 bucks and just get a tiny little micro drone and everybody knew those were junk but this is just on such a different level and i'll definitely go into some of the reasons why a dji drone is not only worth the money that they ask for because they are very premium priced i would say um just in terms of the size and what you might think you get out of the equation but it goes really really far beyond that oh by the way just looking uh i almost forgot so this little lanyard gray loop right here actually came with the propeller guard this allows you to wear the drone around your neck when you're just walking around with it so you don't have to worry about holding it um, and if you just like leave your bag behind for a little while you can keep the drone around your neck I thought that was kind of a cool cool idea not just kind of off the cuff there but um, <clears throat> Anyways, to get back to the drone, I'll set the, the bag aside here. Um, 
By the way, I'm not going to do an unboxing on this guy because it's very basic. I don't think anybody really cares. It's a white box. Comes with the controller. Comes with the drone. Comes with some extra propellers, a screwdriver, and the charging cable. And very, very, very poorly translated instructions. Um, I think they were originally intended to be used for the Chinese market. And somebody just very crudely translated all of the instructions for this drone so um, luckily it's all very intuitive if you download the app on your phone which allows you to have a viewing window for the camera it gives you a very quick tutorial on how to use the drone and um, you know all the controls and everything so luckily you don't really need to rely on the instructions that are inside of the box uh, that come with the drone so first things first, let's go ahead and open up the controller here. Always a fun time working with just one hand. I promise I am working on getting myself a gimbal and a tripod. Um, but anyways, when the controller is unfolded, it's really, really comfortable to hold. It's not very heavy. Um, but what's nice is it balances out really nicely when you actually insert your phone into this empty space here. And I actually, I can't show you that right now because I am using my phone to actually film this. But the rubber grips here give you really, really good confidence that your phone isn't going to slip out. I think the way they engineered this controller is very smart, it's comfortable, it's grippy, so if your hands get a little sweaty while you're filming, you know you're not going to drop this. They give you three adapters for smartphones. It comes with a USB-C adapter, it comes with lightning for iPhones, and micro USB for older Android phones. And it's a little short cable, so... If you intend to use maybe a tablet as your primary screen or primary device um, with the controller, you will probably have to go to like Amazon or eBay and purchase a longer one of these cables. Um, and you'll probably need an adapter that fits where the phone would go and it has a bigger pedestal that will hold your tablet. But otherwise, for a smartphone, I use my Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G. It is a gargantuan phone, and it fits perfectly in here. As you can see, there's adjustable arms. They can go all the way out. And so I can say, for a matter of fact, it will hold a 6.8-inch <laughs> display phone. But we'll have to see when the Galaxy S20 Ultra comes out, because that's going to be even bigger. But um, besides the point... Uh, underneath the controller, they do have two little mounts that hold the joysticks for the controller, and they basically just screw into the controller. So you just set it there, give it a few twirls, and I'll get up closer here. The teeth up at the top offer really, really good grip. So um, a lot of people recommend online that you actually hold the controller with two fingers. It gives you a little bit better grip and it gives you more fine-tuned controls than if you just put your thumb on top of it. I found that I use a hybrid of both just depending on the circumstances. If I'm in a big open area and I'm not as worried about the motion of the camera necessarily, I'm not trying to make fine fine-tuned movements, Keeping my thumb on the stick is just fine because these teeth will grip to your finger very nicely and you won't really have to worry about the the movements and stuff like that. It, it'll work really well. Um, the, the overall battery life, the overall structure, just everything, in my opinion, that went into this controller was very, very well thought out. Um... The battery in the controller will probably last you about three flights is what I found because not only is it being the hotspot for the GPS that is then beamed to the drone, 
but it is also a charging bank for your phone while you're using it as the screen. So they've thought it out very, very nicely. So if you're out and about on the field, you're not having to worry about your phone losing battery. You have the confidence that you will get multiple flights, so basically three battery packs uh, in the drone worth of flights out of this controller. Um, and one thing that I had to learn as I went is making sure that these antennas are constantly pointing at your drone because otherwise you won't get the range that you expect. Um, anytime you're flying, you want to make sure that if your drone is up there in front of you, that's the direction that you're pointing the controller. You'll be tempted to just hold it straight out in front of you with the antennas pointing up, but you'll really want to make sure that you're following the drone everywhere you go and that the antennas are always facing the actual flat side of the antennas are facing the drone while you're flying very very important one more thing um, on the controller before I move on is that it's it's meant to be used in two different ways that I also did not know um, going into using this thing until I just started to read some forums and such online regarding the drone. But you can actually use the controller without your phone being plugged into it, which I, um, you that might seem like a little thing, but I just went into this assuming that because they give you this whole fixture, it's intended to be used in sync with your phone. But it, that that's not the case. You can fold up these arms back inside you can power up the controller and it'll automatically pair up to the drone and you can actually fly the drone just with the controller um, and you still get the ability to hone back to where you started so it still uses the gps to communicate with the drone so if you lose sight of the drone, obviously you don't want to go too terribly far away from yourself while you're using this. And I'll go into some other instances where it might not be such a great idea to fly this drone, but you at least have the peace of mind that you can hit this button right here and that will take you back to your starting place, like where the drone took off. And I found it to be actually, as long as you have GPS signal, as long as it's picking up on multiple GPS satellites, it'll basically always ooh, come back within a foot of where you took off with the drone. Alrighty guys, so um, done talking about the controller here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. I will, I will be, on there actively so make sure you ask questions about this guy um ooh, one more thing so if you guys see these grills down here um not only i i believe these are for cooling but this guy does have a speaker built into it the controller has a speaker in it so does the drone it beeps to let you know when it's paired up and stuff i thought that was kind of cool too so now then to the drone itself sitting here in its really cool little propeller guard. Let's go ahead and take the propeller guard off. So you unlatch the little strap here, and then the DJI Mavic Mini just simply lifts up and out of it. Like I said, this guy is just a little plastic shell with a leather strap and a lanyard loop so that you can carry it around your neck. Really, really cool little gadget. Highly recommend it. So here's the drone in its teeny tiny glory. Actually, let me do a little comparison here. So this is a PS4 controller. Might do a review on this clear controller later. Not much of a review, but more of just to show it off to you guys. I think it's kind of cool. Um, but anyways, the drone is actually a little bit smaller than the controller in terms of its overall length. Um, it's about the same height as a PS4 controller. But what's crazy is with this keyboard attached, the drone is actually lighter <laughs> than the PS4 controller, which is really cool. Um, 
So as is currently, this is what the drone looks like in its folded up position. It can stand straight up as well. That's one of the calibration poses if it tells you to recalibrate the compass or anything like that. Which that's another thing I can make a video about is like what the calibration of the drone looks like and such. If that's something you guys would be interested in. It oftentimes will ask you to calibrate both the compass and the GPS um, of the drone. So that's kind of neat. Underneath the drone, while I have it stood up here, we have four LED lights, which indicate 25% of the battery per light. So um, while it's flying or while you have it stationary at any time, you can press the button right there and it will tell you what the battery life is. Underneath, you have basically grill shutters. This is to allow wind to pass underneath the battery in order to cool it. And then you have two sensors on the bottom that will sense the height or the altitude of the drone. And I have tested it. If you put your hand underneath it, the drone will avoid your hand and any obstacles underneath itself. However, the grill slots that are above the camera here, these two black portions, those are not sensors. Those are just aesthetic uh, little pieces. Um, they do not have any function. If you see there, it's just... A fake grill. Now then if we go ahead we can actually unfold the arms of the drone. Luckily they made it kind of easy to do with just one hand. So there is the unfolded drone now slightly larger than the controller with its folded out propellers. And then one very important thing before I move on, you always wanna make sure that you take the plastic cover over the camera off before you power on the drone because the camera will do a calibration. Um, I'll actually show it to you guys. The camera will move around. And let's go ahead and flip this guy over real quick take off the plastic cover. So the camera sits on a stabilized gimbal. So whenever the drone is on, you will actually see the gimbal moving around as you move the drone, and it's consistently stabilizing. Um, in addition to moving side to side and in various degrees of movement, you also, on the controller, have the ability to control its pitch so you can have it look all the way below itself and all the way uh, up basically so really really neat you have the ability to, uh, uh, to have vertical control on the camera rather than uh, having to move the drone physically up and down which I thought was really cool um, but let's go ahead and power on the drone and I'll kind of show you what that looks like so what you do is on the bottom of the drone here, there is a button. What you do is you click the button once, and then you press and hold the button, and that will power on the drone. So I'm going to shift it around in my hands here. So I'm going to go ahead and press the button once, then press and hold it. And then if you look at the gimbal, it's going to calibrate itself. It moves around. And then if you watch, as I move the drone, the gimbal will actually move to stabilize itself versus the movement of my hand. Really, really cool stuff in such a small package. So today, um, the weather outside is really, uh, really cold and windy. <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the Midwest is uh, having itself some weird winter days. Currently, it's going from cold to warm every other day. It's really wild. Um, but it's not weather that I personally want to go out to right now. So rather than taking the drone out right now, um, I'm going to, like I mentioned previously, show you guys some video from my trip to Alabama from out on the beach. Um, you'll see the you'll get to see the quality the stability of the footage it doesn't have any sound by the way this drone does not record sound along with the video that's something you have to take into consideration if you're going to be using this drone for videography is you may need to get a microphone attachment for it or 
find an application that can record sound simultaneously from your phone while you're using the drone. Um, but that's about it today, guys. I, I covered everything that comes to mind. The base that you guys saw earlier that I lifted the drone up from over there that's glowing... Uh, I'm probably going to do a bit of a separate review for that one just because it, it, it's a really neat gadget to have. They give you this cool magnetic little attachment for the charging port so that you don't damage it by lifting the drone on and off of the charger, which I thought was really neat. But if you guys have other questions regarding the drone, if you want to see an actual takeoff and what flight looks like in first person, I can do an, another video on that, but I'm I'm getting a little long with this, so, and I, I want to be able to show you guys enough video from the drone, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Um, I appreciate it. Make sure you guys subscribe. Give me a like. Comment down below if you have any questions or if you would like to uh, give your opinion on the DJI Mavic Mini. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. Now my axis 